In this module, we'll be going over data loading, which is the first stage in a typical text analysis workflow. There are two important things to consider when loading data into PolyAnalyst. First, what type of file do we have for our source data, or where is that data located? Is it in a CSV file? Is it located in a database or on a website? This will help us choose which data loading node to use. The second consideration is what type of data do we have in our files? Is it text, numbers, dates, strings? This is important to know because it affects what types of operations we can perform on the data. Now, in many cases, the data loading nodes in PolyAnalyst automatically identify the type of data in your data set, and it subsequently standardizes or normalizes the data during import. However, we can also choose to manually change the type and format of the data, giving the user full control over how data is imported. And while we usually have a single data source, we can also combine multiple data sources with data manipulation actions, such as joining or merging data sets. We'll talk more about these types of actions in the data preprocessing section of this series. In the PolyAnalyst Analytical Client, we have a data sources grouping in our node panel that's dedicated to importing data. This group contains nodes for loading all kinds of file formats, including some nodes for scraping data from online sources. For the purposes of this training module, we're going to focus on the three most commonly used nodes in text analysis projects. If you have questions about any of the other data source nodes, you can consult our user manual or contact our support team. The first node we'll talk about is the CSV source node. The CSV, or Comma Separated Values file, is a very popular data format because it allows for some structure in the way we store our data. It's essentially interpreted by computers as a table with columns and rows. The CSV source node can be configured to import both CSV and simple text files, and it also allows other delimiters or value separators besides the comma, such as the tab or semicolon. This node also gives us a variety of encoding options. Choosing the right encoding option for your data is crucial, particularly when working with different languages or online data that may contain characters like emojis. And finally, the node allows us to choose the data types so that the data in every column is interpreted in a specific way by the computer. Additionally, we can choose the format for each data type. For example, we might choose to format dates as year, month, day, instead of month, day, year. We'll return to this node and its configuration in the hands-on practice section of this module. Another popular data source node is the file source. The file source imports folders of documents. And these documents are then loaded as individual records. In other words, the folder is imported as a table, and each document in the folder is a row in that table. This node can also import multiple document file types, including HTML and PDF. The file source node can be configured in the Properties window. This can be done by browsing and selecting the folder we wish to import, as well as choosing the file types to include in the File Masks box here. If we wish to import a different file type that's not listed by default, we can simply type its extension in the File Masks box. However, there are certain limitations on the types of files we can import. Finally, the Open Database Connectivity, or ODBC, source node allows us to load data from a database and import data tables or the results of SQL queries. To access a database source using this node, you'll need to have an ODBC driver on the same Windows machine or PolyAnalyst servers installed. However, the database file source can be on any machine as long as it's on the same network as the PolyAnalyst server. Now, in order to access and connect to the database through the ODBC source node, we need our access credentials for that database. Then we can choose to import a table or a view from the database. Alternatively, we can choose to manually enter an SQL query and import just the results of that query instead of a specific table. Now, let's move on to some hands-on practice with data loading in PolyAnalyst. For this practice session, 
we're going to use the CSV node to import some data from the example data sets that are included with any Polyanalyst installation. So let's find our CSV source node and bring it into our workspace. You can find it under the Data Sources node grouping and simply drag and drop it into the workflow. Now we're going to configure this node. In order to do that, we're going to right click and open the Properties window. If the node hasn't already been configured to point to a file location, opening the node properties will first prompt you to browse for the file you wish to load. If you click Cancel here, or if at some future time you wish to change the file directory the node is loading from, simply click the Browse Single File button to open the File Explorer and locate your desired file. After we click on Browse, we'll navigate to the Examples folder, where all the example datasets of Polyanalyst are located. For this exercise, we're going to use the cardata.csv file. Now once we select it, we'll click OK. Now our file is selected. For most cases, we don't need to configure anything else because Polyanalyst does most things automatically for us. So let's try executing the node to see what happens. After a moment, we can see a green checkmark icon on our node. This indicates that the node has executed successfully. However, we also see that the node has a small triangle icon with an exclamation point. This symbol is a warning, telling us that although the node imported our data successfully, there was a minor error that occurred. To see what the issue is, right-click the node and select View Log. As we can see in the log, the problem is a conversion error at row 59 in the displacement column. The assigned data type was integer, but the cell value had a decimal value. Conversion errors like this occur because Polyanalyst normalizes the data when it imports it. During this process, it tries to identify the data type of each column based on a sample of the values it sees and it tries to make sure that all values in that column are of the same data type when imported. But in our data set, there's one data record that contains a non-integer value in the displacement column. So while the rest of the data record for this row is imported, we won't see that displacement value unless we change the default node settings. So let's open our properties again and take a closer look at what setting options we have and how we can fix this error. Now that we're in the node properties, let's go over a few tips on troubleshooting some common data import issues. First, it's always a good idea to click the refresh button here to see a preview of the data. From this view, everything seems to look okay. But let's say we instead see something in this view that looks strange in the preview. For example, maybe we'll see some gibberish here instead of the data we're expecting. In that case, we'll probably need a different encoding option. This will sometimes occur when we work with languages that don't use the Latin alphabet, or if we have online data that includes characters like emojis. As you can see, there are many different encoding options available to us. Typically, ANSI, UTF-8, and UTF-16 encoding will cover most data sets you'll encounter. Another thing you might see in this view is if your imported data is all in one column instead of in multiple columns. This usually means that your file has another delimiter or value separator besides a comma. To fix this type of issue, we'd want to go to the File Properties tab and select the appropriate separator from the drop-down menu. Now, to fix data conversion errors, like the one we have with this data set, we can go to the Comma Specifications tab. Once we're here, we can click Refresh to get our columns. Now, you'll also notice we have a button called Reread. We only click Reread if we want Polyanalyst to try and re-identify the data types. So after we refresh, we see a listing of the available data columns. The check marks to the left indicate that these are the selected columns that will be imported from the file. 
Notice how Polyanalyst also allows you to add a record number column and a timestamp column if you wish. But for the time being, we'll just leave our dataset as is. For each of the imported columns, we have a source column with an assigned data type. This is what Polyanalyst has identified as the data type of the imported columns. The user column next to it is where the user can change these data types for each imported column. Now, since we've identified that our error was due to the displacement column being set to integer, we'll change this to numerical instead so that it will also accommodate decimal values. To do this, we'll click on the drop down list with all the available data types and we'll select numerical instead of integer for this placement under the user column. You'll also see at the bottom that Polyanalyst gives us different options for formatting the values based on the selected data types. You can find out more details about the different formatting options in our user manual. For now, let's re-execute the node and see if the conversion error is fixed. As you can see, there's no longer an error icon in our node, which means our entire dataset has imported properly. Now we're ready to begin the data pre-processing stage. And this concludes the data loading section of the Polyanalyst Basic Training Series. Up next, we'll go over the different tools that are available in Polyanalyst for data pre-processing. Thanks for watching.